All right, so in three, two. Good afternoon. I, Roa Hassan, now call to order the April 20th meeting of the ooh, of the Legislative and Governmental Relations Committee of the Board of Education of Baltimore County. In accordance with board policy 8311, the chair of a committee at their discretion and after consultation with the staff liaison may convene an in-person meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's meeting is being held virtually and broadcast through Microsoft Teams. To conduct this meeting efficiently, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board members will say their names before making and seconding a motion as applicable, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Additionally, as a courtesy to the committee, I ask that you inform Ms. Rosenberg if you must leave the call by using the Teams chat feature so that a quorum may be maintained. Ms. Rosenberg, will you please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee? Certainly. Ms. Hassan? Present. Ms. Lichter? Present. Ms. Pumphrey? All right, thank you. Um, and then, Ms. Rosenberg, will you also please call the role of staff members participating in today's meeting? Ms. Charlie Green? Mr. Baysmore? Present. Mr. Corns? Present. Thank you so much, Ms. Rosenberg. The first item on the agenda is the end of session legislative update on education bills, and for that I call on Mr. Baysmore. Uh, thank you, Chair Roa. Good to be here again uh, working with this committee. And I just wanted to give a, a brief, brief update on the uh, legislative session and then highlight a few bills that we were tracking this year. And uh, and I want to start off by just thanking you, Madam Chair, uh, for your leadership this year uh, on this committee. Um, I want to thank Jane Lichter as well and Christina Pumphrey. We had an active, uh, engaged uh, committee. And we responded on a few bills uh, that were uh, in in the legislature this year. Uh, there was testimony that was given. There was letters written uh, for certain bills and, and they made a difference. They really made a difference. So I wanna thank you for your leadership and this committee for being so engaged and it was great. For me personally, it was great working with you. It really was. So thank you, thank you. Um, I, I, I'll, I'll give a quick update. Um, and I, and I, I thought I'd start with the budget because as you know, you just went through the budget season and everything all roads lead back to the budget so the state budget this year i'm happy to report uh the fiscal 2024 state budget included um increases in state funding um to local um uh, jurisdictions in the amount of 900 million dollar investment that the state um legislature and the governor uh put in their budget that will go directly to the local municipalities which which is which was so, which is sorely needed, especially as we're implementing the blueprint, uh, which has a big price tag. So that was that was groundbreaking. And for us in Baltimore County, I, I just wanted to um, make you aware because we have a lot of capital needs, a lot of capital needs in Baltimore County. Um, the legislature and the governor provided one billion dollars for school construction, and and um, so that will go to the whole state. You know that one billion in capital funding and a 900 million investment, and in, you know in the blueprint. Uh, but we, as a large county, we will get a sizable portion of that. So that was a a big deal. Um, th it was the um, 445th legislative session that we just ended um, at midnight on April the 10th, and we started January the 11th. So it was fast and furious. It was fast and furious, and we were engaged. Um, there were hundreds of uh, education bills thousand over a thousand bills overall um and as you can imagine um after an election year there was a lot of new senators and delegates um who were getting acclimated to the process we also had a new governor and staff as well so um we had and which which meant that a lot of the key um committees also had new chairs and so it was a lot of newness there new chairs new governor uh, and things of that sort. Uh, but within all of that, uh, we were able to get a lot of work done um, this legislative session. Um, here in Baltimore County, I just want to let you know we're fortunate. We're very fortunate. Um, our senators and delegates are on all of the committees. They're on key committees. They have leadership roles on key committees. 
Um, they appreciate the um, the um, input and help that we give them on a lot of bills. Uh, Madam Chair and uh, Jane Lichter, you were engaged and with our senators and delegates, and, and that really helped them to make good decisions uh, down there because they are they're in key key positions. Um, this year, uh, Senator Charles Sidnor headed up our Baltimore County Senate delegation and, and did a great job in helping to move our local bills. And on the House side, um, Delegate Eric Ebersol uh, was, was the new chair. So we had two new chairs on the Senate and, and the, and the um, um, delegation side. And so uh, Delegate Eric Ebersol has just been fantastic with education. He's a teacher as well. And so he was very engaged in a lot of our local bills. So we just want to give them a shout out and thank them for working with us uh, collaboratively. Um, so we're well positioned uh, in Baltimore, you know, in the state at the state office with our leadership. So um, with that, I wanted to highlight a few a few bills that we were tracking during the session, uh, bills that passed, and um, a few of these, if it wasn't for the work of our committee, our legislative committee, um, I know that some of these bills wouldn't have passed. Um, so the first bill that we're going to highlight um, is um, House Bill 001. Um, this is in, the, in it's not directly education, but it, it it has such media coverage. You know, it was a very important bill uh, for the whole state. And uh, HB 1001 is um is the child abuse, child sexual abuse definition and statute of limitations bill. Um, known as the Child Victim Act of 2023. And essentially what this bill did was it repealed the um, statute of limitations on civil suits for um, uh, a sexual, you know, child sexual abuse cases. So, um, and it allows civil action and the bill is, is retroactive. Uh, prior to this bill, there was a statute of limitations on um, child sexual abuse cases. So this repeal that. So I just wanted to uh, bring that to us because it had so, so much media coverage and it was a major, major bill. It was House Bill number one, actually, uh, in the state legislature. Um, I want to move on to uh, House Bill 78, SB 120, Senate Bill 120. That's the um, public schools anaphylactic food allergy bill, which um, our uh, MABE, uh, which represents the uh, 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 24 local boards uh, su supported this bill. We supported this bill as a local jurisdiction, and um, it's it's um, it came up with new with new guidelines uh, around uh, anaphylactic food allergies that must be posted and must be um, um, developed by local school systems to make um, students, staff, and everyone aware. Of, of, of these allergens uh, contained in certain foods. Um, we have to monitor them. The local jurisdicts have to monitor these new um, um, guidelines. They have to implement them um, and, and make sure that they, they are being um, uh, carried out. So that, that bill uh, passed, and I'm happy to say. And uh, I don't think it's been signed by the governor yet, but uh, um, there's no indication, indication that, that, that he's going to veto this bill. So I'm pretty sure this bill will be signed. Um, our next, our next bill, um, and I'll let uh, Madam Chair talk about this one, uh, Chair Roa. This is the uh, House Bill 175. It's the Baltimore County Board of Education Student Member Voting uh, and Training Bill, um, which authorizes the student member of the Baltimore County Board um, to vote on capital and operating uh, budget matters. So, uh, Chair Roy, if you'd like to elaborate on that, you were very engaged with this bill. Yes, and just for the record, I'm also letting you guys know that Ms. Pumphrey is here in the call. Um, but so this bill, House Bill 175, is one that, um, as Mr. Bazemore said, um, provides the next student member and every student member following her um, a vote on the capital and operating budgets, which is absolutely essential to our system and to our processes. Um, we truly cannot have a system that represents students if we don't have students making those decisions in conjunction um, with the Board of Education um, and, and a part of that decision and, and the major vote in that decision as well. Um, so 
Um, it definitely, definitely is something that I've testified on several times. I testified um, to the Baltimore County House delegation and the Baltimore County Senate delegation um, regarding that, um, you know, answered a lot of their very important and meaningful questions. Um, but most importantly, just made it clear that our student members are um, essential voices and essential votes to this process um, and really that we cannot have um, the proper representation and amplification of student voice without the student vote. Um, so that's it's definitely very sentimental to me. Um, we're still awaiting the the governor's signature on that, um, but we're hoping for the best. We're hoping that it you know follows through. But we're we're incredibly proud of the legislative work that that I know my predecessors have put in and and really um, passed the torch, um, as Mr. Baysmore um, and Mr. Charlie Green would say. Um, passed the tr passed the torch, and it was very much like relay style. Um, so I'm very happy to hopefully be getting it to the finish line. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I must say that this bill had a lot of healthy debate on both sides, and a lot of good points were brought out on both sides. And and um, um, you you did very well in engaging the senators and the delegates, and 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 some very tough questions. Uh, and you know, legitimate and good questions came up, but it was um, it was good dialogue. It was good. Um, it was, it was just it was government at work and uh so i want to thank you yeah thank you for your leadership so. thank you mr raise more mm -hmm. and um our next bill is house bill 210 and um i call this the bill the bill the bill that you're living and have lived <laughs> all of the board members you're all experts on this bill you could have you could have wrote it yourself um but we want to thank uh delegate ebersol and delegate forbes for um putting this together um, it's HB 210 is the Baltimore County Board of Education member elections and appointments. And this bill actually um, requires the, that the seven elected members, um, which, you know, um, Ms. Pumphrey and uh, uh, Ms. Lifter, you, you, you're elected, um, that your election will, the seven elected members will always occur in the gubernatorial election cycle. So that's that's fine. That'll stay as it is. Um, what they did was change the appointments of the four appointed members by the governor to the presidential election cycle, so that you wouldn't have the situation that we've all lived the last the last few months of uh, of uh, uh, a lame duck governor essentially not being able to appoint while they're transitioning out of office the four members. Therefore, we all had to wait until the new governor came in get settled in and then make the appointments, um, which there's, you know, a two or three month lag time in there. And so um, to avoid that, this bill says that uh, the appointed members will be appointed in presidential years. The one amendment that came with this, because they said because the process is just starting, well, you know, where the governor just appointed, that these members who started off thinking that they would be appointed for four years, but because it's been so much time, before this, that their time, their their appointment time will be shortened because the presidential election is in 2024, and and so uh, what uh, Senator Sitton or amendment said was that we will give them on the back end. We will say that they can serve until 2028, as opposed to 2024. Uh, so that extra year and a half that they tacked on, um, um, they thought was fair to the to to those members. Um, and then after that, it will be every four years. So, so uh, I know that was important to all of us. And so I just wanted to throw it back to uh, you, Madam Chair, and any of the uh, um, uh, board members to comment on that because you all were involved uh, in that in that bill. Of course, yeah. Um, board members, do we have any comments on that one? I know um, this is absolutely one of those, um, Mr. Raysmore, as you taught me, fix it bills. <laughs> um, so, um, so I think it, it's very very relieving um just to to not have to worry about this whole like you know we had this waiting period we had this very lengthy waiting period and an essential process that was you know especially during you know the superintendent's search and you know in and, and needing a full board to be able to make that decision you know as a collective and and you know being able to really declare that unity as a full like 12 member board um so i know i'm incredibly grateful for the work that um, Delegate Ebersole and, and Delegate Forbes put into this because we would not be here without them and, and we would not have had this bill passed without them. Um, so board members, do, does anyone have any additional comments um, regarding that bill? 
No, I mean, I, I echo what you said, Roja. The only thing I'm concerned about is when they make, when the nominating committee goes back to look for number 12, can they look for 12, 13, and 14? I mean, six years is a long time. And like we've learned, we've, you know, we, I can remember re in recent history, we've had two vacancies. So I guess to have like a, a pool or a people on deck would, would make it, um, a smoother process if somebody for whatever reason has to resign um, so that I know that's not this bill but I didn't know um, you know do, you know is that possible or was that another bill as far as having like people on deck so that somebody leaves there's not this lag time yes yes uh, madam chair that's a bill we're going to cover um, oh, HB okay. 348 but you're right on you're right you're okay. spot on actually um, then that's a great point you just made. So I'll cover that in, in okay. HB 348. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. Thanks. No, that's a good. It was an excellent point. Ms. Pumphrey, did you want to weigh in? Oh, I'm sorry, Madam Chair. That was just... No, you're okay. I was about to ask, but you're good. Um, I know she's joined from her phone, but Ms. Pumphrey, okay. if you have anything to add, please feel free. If not, no worries. Okay. Um, and the next bill is HB 348. So that was perfect timing. There you go. Uh, perfect timing. So this bill addresses the um, the school board nominating commission vacancies, which, as we know, and the unfortunate um, untimely death of Roger Hayden, uh, who was a board member when he passed away. And I don't, I'm not 100 percent if it was if it took six months, but I thought that's what I heard that it took four or five or six months when they went through the process as it was written uh, to get, you know, another person into that seat. And as, and as uh, uh, Madam Chair said, there's been a couple of occasions where you've had vacancies. Yeah. Um, so Delegate Pastor was another one recently. That's the one. I, that's, right. it, thank you. Thank you. That's exactly right. So um, what Delegate Forbes said is saying um, that when there's a vacancy, instead of going through that lengthy process that we had to go through before by statute, that we can actually have a public hearing and have it virtually and, um, um, you know, make the process, you know, a, a lot leaner, if you know, for lack of a better word, um, but still be able to get as many people as you possibly can. Um, one of the points that she made out was that when they had to go around the county with all of these meetings, the commission, um, only one or two people showed up at those meetings at the time, but it took a lot of time to do that. And so um, in her thinking, and this bill did pass, um, if you can do it virtually as well, they can still have that, you know, a meeting in the community. Um, but if they did a virtual meeting, those who couldn't physically get there um, could actually um, um, see it and participate um, live stream. The other part that of this bill that she thought about too, and this goes to uh, 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 Matt, Chair Lichter's point, of reactivating um, former applicants so that you don't have to go through the whole process. If you have people that have already been vetted, they've already been approved, um, they've already, you know, um, uh, met, met, met the criteria that um, if, if they could use them as well um, when they go through the selection process. Now, what she said was that that's contingent on the commission contacting that member and saying, well, are you interested? And then if they say, yes, I am, because they may not be. They may have applied a couple of years ago and may not be interested at this point in their life. So they, they, that's the one thing, one contingent in there. They would contact them, ask them if it was OK to reactivate their application. So I think, Madam Chair, Chair Lichter, I think that might have addressed that concern. All right, thank you. And um, I see Ms. Pumphrey in the chat just had some um, trouble unmuting or I must have been muted at that point. Um, so sorry, sorry, Ms. Pumphrey, um, but very happy you're able to use the chat feature still. Um, and then Mr. Bazemore, do we have any other um, additional updates on any bills? I have uh, one more with the, and this, let me see if I can find that one. Yeah, HB uh, 514, I wanted to highlight that because um, Ms. Pumphrey was in, involved with this legislation and highlighted this one at our first meeting and we tracked track this bill. Um, and this is HB 514. 
It is the uh, Maryland Meals for Achievement and Classroom Breakfast Program annual appropriation. Um, what this bill, bill did was increase the appropriation required by the governor for the Maryland Meals for Achievement and Classroom Breakfast Program um, from $7 million to $12 million in the annual budget. Um, that's a big deal, but you can expand on the services that, 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 that you're providing for meals uh, uh, for children. Um, there was another bill um, that Ms. Pumphrey had brought up as well, um, was HB 628, which would have um, uh, been a universal breakfast and lunch program. Um, that bill did not pass. I just wanted to report on that, um, but it was submitted, um, but it but it did not pass. And uh, and I think Ms. Pumphrey also um, locally, um, I think she made a motion or or well, Ms. Ms. Pumphrey, did you want to speak on your, you know, advocacy for for meals for for children? If you if you can. You may be having technical difficulties. I can speak well, since she came on. She, um, Ms. Pumphrey was wonderful with making sure that that these bills got passed and was a starch advocate for it. And we'll all remember the board meeting where she was making the motion and then staff had to tell her that it was already in place. So um, thank you, Ms. Pumphrey, for your diligence and your passion for that for this um, topic. Thank yes, you, Madam thank Chair. You, Ms. Pumphrey. Yes, and a foresight and a foresight. Um, I want to also uh, just quickly uh, report on uh, priority bills that failed, that we were heavily engaged in. House Bill 119 uh, was a curriculum bill that would have taken away. Yes, that was a big, big deal. And all the local jurisdictions made, um, our board was actively engaged in sending letters and testifying about this particular bill. It did, it did not pass, it failed, but it would have took a significant um, control from local jurisdictions as as it pertains to curriculum you know and and uh so uh may put out a call to action um i was very impressed with all the local jurisdictions and us because we had to move if you remember we had to move really rapidly and quickly to do a lot of things so um i don't know if you want to comment uh chair lichter and and um chair royal because you you guys were actively involved in this one yeah, absolutely. Um, so it is absolutely so important that that bill did not pass um, because it was so it was it was, you know, it was controlling our local jurisdictions. And at that point, at that level of control, especially with something like curriculum, um, what is our purpose if we're having, um, you know, these laws that would then just dictate absolutely everything that we're doing? You know, we have, you know, we are in these positions for the specific reason of you know, making our students or encouraging our students to succeed, especially in academic achievement. Um, so I think it's it is so important that, you know, we maintain that autonomy um, in, you know, what happens in our curriculum um, and what happens in our system. So I think it's I'm very happy that, you know, as a collective, you know, as a board, we were able to oppose this, um, you know, as you know, I know every like every county um, in Maryland was very willing and adamant and ready to oppose this um, and, and made with a very strong partner in that and a very strong leader in that. Um, so I, I have to give shout outs to Mabe for that, um, for making sure that every county was aware of what was happening um, and making sure that this isn't something that, you know, is going to pass because this is not a, you know, precedent that we want to set for our, our local education system. And I don't know if anybody else wanted to feel free to comment on that as well. Well said, Ms. Hassan. Thank you so yes. much. Yes, well said. And, and, and Chair Licht, I want to thank you for moving this along really quickly uh, to the whole board. Um, that that was critical. Um, so, that, that was easy, that, but you're well, welcome. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, thank, thank, thank you on that one. Um, House Bill 294, this was a um, a due process proceedings for children with disabilities burden of proof bill. There was a local bill and a statewide bill. Both of them failed uh, to pass. It would have shifted the burden of proof um, to school systems when it comes to special education hearings. Uh, so the local bill and the uh, statewide bill failed, failed to pass. Um, this was a um, fascinating um, bill that I want to bring up, HB 515, which the active shooter safety drills and training requirement, uh, which we, you know, we have all of that now, but this bill 
uh, would have prohibited um, active shooter drills and trainings in schools um, concerning sp certain specific activities. And the reason it was fascinating, the debate uh, for this was, and actually doing the training, are you traumatizing some students or staff by actually going through the training? And if you can imagine having certain things happen that happens at an active shooter drill, um, the debate was, are we traumatizing some kids, some students and staff by the training? Um, so this bill was going to prohibit certain things within the training. Um, it did not pass, but it, but there's a healthy debate going on. How do you effectively train people to deal with something as traumatic as an active shooter without traumatizing them, staff and children, by the mere act of going through and simulating certain certain things? So um, I'll keep you posted. I think you know this will be back in some shape or form, but I just wanted to up, up, update on that. And then the medical uh, family and medical leave insurance program uh, bill passed where if you have to be out on the medical leave for family, um, that there's an insurance program that will help cover some of the, uh, um, you know, the financial burden that, um, you know, families have, whether it's a loved one or, 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 or that's sick or, or the actual employee and uh, they need to take a leave of absence. Uh, so there's an insurance program to help with that. Um, I believe there's a, um, employer and employee contribution to it, but I thought, you know, that affects everyone. So I just wanted to highlight, highlight that one. Um, I think that's it, Madam Chair. Um, uh, we're working on our final, final um, update that will be sent to you and updated on um, board docs, our, our summary um, of all the bills that we were tracking. Uh, Ms. Rosenberg is working on that as we speak. And uh, so hopefully next week we'll have that posted on board docs. So with that, that, that ends my legislative session wrap up. And again, I just want to thank you. I really want to thank you, Madam Chair, uh, uh, for your leadership and engagement. Um, this was a good session. It was it was wild and fast and furious, but it, it was good. We were very successful. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Bazemore, for all of the work that you put in um, from here all the way to Annapolis. Um, I know you put in that work just to make sure that, you know, we were updated and we were, you know, aware of everything that was happening, but also being in those rooms when we couldn't be and, you know, being in those rooms on behalf of, on behalf of the system. Um, so thank you so much for everything that you've done over this past session and for for your support in me and in this committee. Um, I know I would not be you know, in this position as chair, if it weren't for for your support and for Ms. Lichter's support and, you know, allowing me to even be in this position. Um, I really cannot thank you both enough and to Ms. Pomfrey for being here and a part of this committee is so important to me. So, so much love and appreciation for all of you guys and Ms. Rosenberg, Mr. Corns. I love you guys. You guys are the best. You guys have definitely shown me shown me how to run a meeting you know efficiently and effectively um but also like the work that you guys do behind the scenes is so like i'm so appreciative of that so with that i'm going to open up to any questions and comments and then i'm going to share with you guys something regarding our meeting schedule so i'm going to open it up anyone have any questions comments concerns um i just want to thank you um miss hassan for your leadership i know you know i didn't know you when i had to make the committee you know um, whatever it's called, committees, um, and you did advocate for yourself that this was something that you were passionate about and really wanted um, to be on the committee and would have liked to take a leadership role. And so um, it was definitely the right choice. Um, your passion um, just came through. It was a perfect fit. Um, you know, knowing what your future may hold, I hope that this experience, you know, really enhanced um, and gave you some additional background experience. So um, thank you for your leadership. Um, and um, it was it was the right choice. So, uh, yeah. Oh, um, I'm so glad. No, I'm so glad that we got to share this experience together. And I'm, I'm so glad that I got to have this experience. Um, you guys are absolutely amazing. And I truly cannot thank you guys enough. Um, and I feel like I feel like this is like very a nice segue um, into. Mm -hmm. um, one one second, Ms. Hassan, I didn't. I also wanted to thank Mr. Baysmore. Um, yes. You've been you've been wonderful to work with. Um, again, I didn't know hardly anything about this committee, but we needed another person. That's how actually how I got on it um, because <laughs> we were missing some. But I appreciate your support and your diligence and your patience with us, you know, explaining all of these and the status. 
um, and your support to me when I was called in front of the, mm -hmm. the Senate, the Senator. So, um, so thank you for the work that you do too. Um, and Thanks. Christina is thanking you both also in the chat or Miss Pumphrey. I got I, all the <laughs> formality. Miss Pumphrey is also expressing her gratitude in the chat um, to both of you too, as she's furiously typing away right now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Miss Hassan, I didn't mean to cut you off. That's before. okay. No, I was okay. I was about to say the same thing. So you're perfect. Okay. All right. And with that, I do um I do want to make a motion to um remove um the next um committee meeting that is on that is in May, um because we've we've concluded our business here. Um, for this session. So the next meeting would then be in November with pre-filed legislation. Um, and at that time, of course, you guys would have a, a new chair. Um, but um, I just wanted to to make a motion to remove the next legislative and governmental relations committee as our business is concluded as a result of the end of session. I will second the motion. Thank you so much. And I will ask Ms. Rosenberg to please call the roll call vote. Ms. Hassan? Yes. Ms. Lichter? Yes. Ms. Pumphrey? She's typing. <laughs> <laughs> There's bubbles cracking up. <laughs> is she typing faster and faster? The bubbles seem to be getting <laughs> right. That's okay. It's okay. We got it. You got it, Miss Pumphrey. <laughs> well, even if it's two out of three, that would be the motion passes, right? Okay. Yeah, but I, I think we should. I think we should. I think we should just like still, you know. Okay. Wait. We'll wait, wait, we'll just wait to be cordial. Okay. Just because we're having her type, you know, like no, no, like no, frantically right. type. You know what I mean? You're right. I just don't want to get frustrated. I can always call her too. That's okay. <laughs> Like we'll wait a little bit. And then I know typing is a pain. Okay, but she should be typing yes or no. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. Okay. Oh, there. Whoa. Okay. Oh, there we go. Okay. She's got a big question. All of the recommendations. Okay, so we're just gonna conclude the vote then with the on the motion to cancel the next meeting, and we will answer this question. I'll have maybe Mr. Bazemore can answer this question um, better than I can. But um, Mr. Bazemore, um, Ms. Pumphrey is asking, um, would advocating to the county council to follow the recommendations of the APFO task force be a part of this committee? Um, that's that's a that's actually a good question. I, I followed that uh, 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 task uh, committee, um, and Julie Hen was a part of that committee. Um, I think that we have to have further discussion because sometimes what you want to do when there's another another legislative body that's that's um, uh, uh, putting forth legislation and, and policies and programs. You know that that directly impact them, and they have oversight of. Um, you just want to be um, thoughtful in how we engage with our council um, uh, in that process. Um, so, what I would I would say, Ms. Pumphrey, that's a, a discussion that we can have at a at a later date, and um, can re reach out to um, Councilman David Marks, who actually was lead led that effort, and uh, that way we're working uh, collaboratively with um uh our county council so i think i probably should have a, another conversation about that but i don't i don't think it would come necessarily from this committee if it you, you know your engagement in that um the way the way it was set up thank you so much mr Bazemore, for that question um i do see miss please i think um but does anyone else in the meantime um, have any final remarks um, before we go ahead and get ready? I just want to make sure that I understand that AF, APFO is adequate public facilities. Facility. Ordinance, okay. Ordinance, yes, ma'am. And, that, and that's um, county, it's, 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 it's involved planning and development. Um, you know how they use the formula 
uh, uh, Chair Lichter, to determine if if I can build 300 homes here, right. will that impact the schools? Will it impact you know a whole lot of things? Well, uh, uh, Councilman Marks last year put a, put together a task force that Julie Hill was on, and she was really engaged. So she's probably your point person on that one. Uh, she has a great relationship with uh, Councilman Marks, um, and and so they did their work. But then you, it, it just you didn't hear much afterwards. So um, when we revisit that, um, that would be our piece of that 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 um, APFO would be the impact of of these decisions on schools through that development process. Okay, thank right. you for that clarification. Okay, All right. thank you. Um, awesome. Yeah, can may I say something? Uh, uh, Chair Roa, because I, I really must say this, um, and I've been around the block a, a, a few times, uh, but I must say the work of this committee um, this year, especially because we had a new governor, especially we, because we had so many new senators and delegates, we came off an election year. That happens every four years. There was a huge turnover in leadership, committee assignments, everything. So it was one of those years where we all were like, oh, here we go. Um, but through your leadership with this committee, your engagement, um, we really had a good session and our committee really worked well together and we were engaged. And I can't um, leave without, without uh, thanking uh, uh, Chair Lichter for her leadership. Leadership starts at the top. She had the vision and foresight um, um, to, to, to have you on the committee and have you as chair. And it was, it was perfect. It, as she said, it, it, it would actually be perfect. We all worked seamlessly together. Miss Miss Pumphrey came right in um, on the food piece and and and, and universal uh, meals and and testifying. Uh, I really like before we never had a chair come down and testify like like uh, um, a chair Lichter did to the Senate. And what she did masterfully was not just to answer all of their questions and concerns. But in answering them, she was educating them on the school system in a way that I've always felt they needed to hear because they know a lot of things, but it's good for them to hear from someone who's worked in the system and knows how, how all of it, you know, the operations and everything work. So we all felt um, that that was really um, good this year for them to hear that. And I know, I know it um, uh, influenced some of the decision making too. And uh, so, uh, Madam uh, Chair, Lichter, you did a great job. That's not an Thank easy you. room to. It's not an no. easy room to walk in. <laughs> it it's not. No. Right. No, no. It was a. It was a unique experience, but yeah. um, it worked out fine. And I appreciate you being. You certainly had my back. He was sitting right behind me. So. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he figuratively and literally had my back. So. Yeah. Um, so I. I appreciate your support. And um, yeah, we're do, we're 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 moving along. We are. We are. <laughs> And Roy, you know you don't you don't get away. We 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 got you a speed dial. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't intend to go anywhere. You know, I'm only hey, I'm only 50 minutes away from the county. Five zero. Okay. okay. You're stuck with me. All right. Well, thank you, Madam Chair. Right. Thank everybody. Thank, thank you guys so much. And the last item on the agenda is announcements. The next legislative and governmental relations committee meeting will be in November. For date and time to be determined. Okay. Thank all you. Right. And with no further business, the meeting is now adjourned. Thank you all so much for Thank joining us. Bye, Thank everybody. You. Bye, guys.